You're listening to Just Hit Play with your hosts, Peter and Nick Cabral. If you're tired of your stagnant, streamed music feed, then strap yourselves in for an intergenerational sonic journey through Peter and Nick's favorite songs. Welcome to episode 116 of Just Hit Play. I'm your host, Peter. With me is my co-host, Nick. Nick, how's it going? It's going well. It's been a cold day. I've been out of the house all day, had had class and stuff, and then... Yeah. Went to get soup dumplings after lab with some friends from school, and uh, yeah, happy to be home in the warmth. That sounds nice, actually. Let me tell you about what the temperature was here on Monday. It was 41 degrees. Oh, (laughs) no, no, that's that's too hot. It was awful. Just absolutely awful. I I think I would just simply lay down and wait for it to be over yeah whenever anyone says they want to come to australia i try to i try to convince them not to come in the summertime but you know but they say well no we want to come for the heat and i was like no you don't you don't want to come for that heat um (laughs) yeah march you guys were here in march march april is a lovely time to come it's still warm you can still go swimming and you're not dying uh in 41 degree heat so yeah it was it was absolutely awful yeah, if if you if you go to Australia, I recommend going March April because, as you said, it was lovely back then. Like, it, yeah, it was great temperature. Nothing, nothing uh, excessively hot. No, and we went to the beach a bunch of times. We went swimming. You you went surfing. It was it was absolutely delightful in in March. So yeah, come in March, especially in Brisbane. Uh, if you go to if you're going to stay in Sydney or Melbourne, it'll be a little bit cooler in March and, and April. So maybe come to Sydney in February. That that'll be a nice time. But if you're coming to Brisbane specifically, do not come in the summertime. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. Are you ready to get into some music? Uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this week, actually. Okay, me too. So uh, you're going first this week because I went first last week. So uh, tell us about your artist. All right. So this week I decided to throw it back a bit. It's It's been a while since I got you to listen to just a good, good old classic yeah. hip hop song. And I think... This week's is truly that. It is a hip-hop song in every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we have Hold You Down by The Alchemist featuring Prodigy, Ella G, and Nina Sky. Darren, just hit play. All right, so hold you down. We've got the Alchemist. We've got Prodigy, who you're a fan of. Elegy, Nina yep. Sky. Uh, what did you think of this track? Yeah, I didn't love it, but um, I didn't hate it by any stretch of the imagination. It was you're right. You're right when you say it's like old school hip hop. The the backing track was really good. It was inventive. It was dynamic. It wasn't one note by any stretch of the imagination i just didn't i don't know why i didn't love the song i i liked it but i just yeah for whatever reason i just didn't love it all right fair enough well i i must say i'm a bit surprised because i thought this would scratch uh your Mm. your taste in rap but maybe maybe not i'm i'm surprised as well i don't know why i didn't love the song um yeah because you're right it's got all the elements of hip-hop that i like yeah i just yeah i don't know why i just didn't love it Fair enough. Well, yeah. The Alchemist, I, I have to say, is uh, he's probably, right now at least, he's my favorite mm. hip hop producer, like full stop. I, mm. I don't think anyone gets better than him at making beats. And this song came out in 2004, but if anything, he's better and more prolific now than he ever has been like this guy just right he's aging like wine and keeps getting better with time in, in my view uh, but the beat on this song hold you down i think is uh, to this day one of his best beats i love it so much oh, oh i agree i think the i think the backing track through the whole song is is like i said it's dynamic it doesn't 
you know, it's it's it changes enough, and they I like there's a little bit of interplay between the rapping and the backing track too, which I which I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, no, I, I'd say the backing track was was brilliant. Yeah, when uh, they integrate the sample that goes like "Hold You Down," yeah. when they integrate that in the verses, and it like ends yes, off the exactly with, with that sample, it's brilliant. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It doesn't happen enough in rap. I think rap is so sample based, and I think there's so much more mm. room for them yeah. to do fun stuff like that. But but this track really excels because um, the alchemist is just one of the best samplers i've ever heard you know it's such a throwback that i and i watched the video and i couldn't put it in a time period i i, I have no idea if this is a new song or if it's an old song it, it sort of has that that timeless aspect to it uh so yeah tell tell us is that an, is it a new song is it an old song what, what's the story here Right, so this song came out in 2004. Uh, as you said, I got okay. you to listen to, or sorry, I got you to watch a video of The Alchemist and Prodigy in the studio together making the yep. song from Saw scratch. Yep. Uh, really cool video. I love watching them just make yeah. tracks like that. It's so cool. But yeah, yeah. This, was, uh, this was from The Alchemist's debut album, First Infantry, uh, which came out in 2004. But the Alchemist's career started uh, much before that, actually. It took him a while to get around to putting an album out. And that's because mm -hmm. he was a producer, first and foremost. Uh, so we'll take it back to 1991. Uh, the Alchemist, he's from Beverly Hills, California. And okay. he just a suburban teenager from California until he discovered hip hop and he really resonated with like the rebellious lyrics and imagery and uh, was sort of, he wasn't a fan of like the suburban life. Uh, so really gravitated towards hip hop and the messages and stuff. Um, and then he formed a rap duo with his friend when he was 14 and they're performing at like a house party or something. And then they met be real from Cypress Hill. And that sort of just fast tracked right. into getting all these industry connections and stuff. Yeah. Fast forward, he's producing for Mob Deep, Nas, Fat Joe, Jadakiss, Ghostface Killa, Snoop Dogg, like all the big names of the 90s. Sure, uh, yeah. He worked with, in a, in a very quick time, he made a really big name for himself as one of the best producers. You know, it's funny. Obviously, talent will help and, you know, help you get to whatever level you need to get to. But it's it's circumstance and sometimes putting yourself out there uh, is just as important or confidence is just as important for your career as talent is, strangely enough. Yeah, like what are the odds these, this guy and his friend mm. are just performing at a house party in L.A. and a guy from Cypress Hill right. is there, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's no. w without that, this guy would probably just be a random yeah. guy. But yeah, here he is working um, with the biggest names in hip hop. Yeah, sometimes all you need is that one break, and uh, yeah, it'll it'll uh, turn your life around. Yeah, and like he's he's had a very good career since he started so young. Um, Alchemist is forty six years old, uh, born in nineteen seventy seven, okay. and okay. in that time, yeah, he's he's worked with everyone under the sun. Like I said, all those guys in the nineties, and then he put out this album in two thousand four. Uh, a year later, he became Eminem's official DJ, like for tours and stuff. So he was, he always mm -hmm. goes on tour with Eminem. Um, and now the alchemist in, in present day, 2024, he's really spearheading like the, the boom bap revival movement, I guess you could call okay. it like every, every rapper now that embodies that sort of old classic hip hop sound the Alchemist is putting out albums with them. He's producing for them. Um, yeah, super prolific guy. Yeah, that makes sense why I felt it was such a throwback because he's just a couple of years younger than me. So in my hip hop era would definitely have been more the gangster rap era of like the New York, L.A. sort of battle that was happening. Um, so it's it's definitely more reminiscent of that era, especially with some of the the uh, the lyrics in the song and uh, so the imagery of the video and things like that. Um, yeah, so no wonder I, I thought it was a throwback. Yeah, you guys are definitely part of the same generation. Like you, yeah, you generation probably X. listening to the same yeah. music. 
absolutely like, yeah. as far as rap goes for sure so this guy just happened to be a really good producer and started working with them all no you know i think rap again i'm no expert but i'm gonna go off here um i, I think rap is definitely so integral with technology and you know you couldn't have the rap that we have or the hip hop that we have without technology evolving in the, in, you know, the sampler being one of them and, you know, scratching records, you know, where rock and roll or that kind of music is pretty much the same since like the fifties where, yeah. uh, you know, you sort of have a fuzz guitar and you have the drums and you have the bass and, you know, as sort of keys in the eighties and, and synth in the eighties sort of changed the, the way music is being made and dance music is always sort of on the edge of, of the technology being, being brought forward, but it's really rap music that, that lives on the edge of technology. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really interesting to see how it progressed over the years. Yeah. I mean, without the sampling board and, and mixing mm. board, like, it, it the genre would be completely different you know, who knows what it would look like now and yeah i think i think that's born out of um, hip-hop's dna being rooted in like jazz music and and soul mm-hmm. music which is mm-hmm. those are very progressive creative genres uh, built around experimentation and yeah. hip-hop still has that dna of the freedom mm-hmm. to experiment uh, that other genres uh, I, maybe don't. Yeah, I know we've talked about this in the past, but right now hip hop it's in its history, it's right around at the same point where rock and roll was in the seventies, where it stopped being counterculture and became popular music. And it started being seen as artwork. Like, you know, you have Kendrick Lamar winning um oh he won some kind of uh, songwriters award. Um Pulitzer. You know, and Pulitzer, thank you. And so you're sort of getting hip hop music being high culture now, which is what happened in the seventies to rock and roll, which kind of made, you know, some of that a little bit boring and may, I don't know if, I don't know if you feel about that, feel about that with hip hop, but I'm curious to see where hip hop's going to go in the next few years. I personally think hip hop is in the, it's equivalent of the eighties where it's become a little, Oh, is, is that where you are? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the genre is too pop and too mainstream now that mm. um, a lot of what's popular and a lot of what does well on the radio is just garbage, uh, yeah. and I don't like it at all. Um, but that's why I'm really happy that we have guys like The Alchemist, who, mm-hmm. as I said, is spearheading the movement of like keeping the 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 soul of the genre alive. He's working with guys like freddie gibbs and boldy james and earl mm. sweatshirt and what west side gun all rappers i adore uh super lyrical really rooted in that boom bap style and yeah, yeah. yeah all their songs with the alchemist are incredible yeah yeah like i said it's got all the it's got all the elements of a hip-hop song that i would love but i just didn't i don't know why um yeah i liked it but yeah just did not fall in love with the song Fair enough. You know, if, if that if that sample didn't do it for you, didn't turn into the earworm that it did for me, that's, yeah. that's totally fair. But I, I love this song. I can't get out of my head. Okay, so I've, I've got another question for you. So this song came, you said came out in 2004, which yep. would have mean, which would have meant you were very young when this song was released. Yeah. So how, how did you come to this to this artist? Uh, how did I come to this artist? Probably... Yeah. I, I definitely really got put onto the Alchemist kind of late, like in 2018. He he did a album, uh, a collab album between Freddie Gibbs and another rapper called Currency. Uh, I love Freddie Gibbs, one of my favorite rappers ever. So really enjoyed that album. That made me realize who the Alchemist is, because a lot of the time producers in hip hop, they're like the the person behind the curtain. You know, you don't really. Yeah unless you start looking at credits, you don't really know who's producing these songs, who's making sure, these beats. Sure. Yeah. Once I found out who this guy is, saw all the beats he made that I already loved, um, that put him on my radar. And then ever since I just, I've just listened to anything he's made since 2018, huh. any album or song. And uh, about a year ago, I was bored of my music, wanted some new stuff. So I Googled best alchemist, 
uh, beats ever, and this song yeah. came up. So oh, I really cool. enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always curious on, on, especially some of the older artists, how you, you know, I think Arcade Fire sort of led you to the cars. Uh, you know, it's it's funny how these sort of yeah. roadmaps happen, you know, um, how we, we sort of get into our artists. It's by listening to a lot of times to other artists. Arcade Fire also got me into Bruce Springsteen. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no cars go. That's that's just a Bruce Springsteen song. It it is a pretty yeah. <laughs> Bruce loves a car, uh, loves a song about a car, or or the highway. He loves yeah. it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, no, thanks for bringing. Like I said, I wish I I wish I loved the song a little bit more. But yeah, I don't know what, what I don't know what it is about it. Yeah, like I said, fair enough. All right. Um, it's time for my song, and I got you to listen and watch to Shakespeare's Sister, a song called Stay. Uh, so for this, for the next four songs, I'm going to get you to first watch the video. So I'm going to get you to watch really cool videos that came out in the 90s. And this is one of my favorite videos of all time. Uh, as I said, it's Shakespeare's sister and the song is Stay. Darren, just hit play. If this world is wearing thin And you're thinking of escape I'll go anywhere with you Just wrap me up in chains But if you try to go alone Don't think I'll understand All right, so the first question I have for you is Have you ever heard this song before? I don't think I have, no Okay um, now, obviously, there's an, uh, you know, I got you to watch the video first. What did you think of the video? And obviously, there's a very specific point in the video where the song changes com- com- <laughs> completely. So tell me what your thoughts of the video were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, video's great. It's very uh, over the top and a little campy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I loved it. Um, super dramatic. But yeah, mm. when, when the... I, I angel don't of death, like an yeah. alien, angel of yeah, death, yeah, like an angel. Let's of death. call her angel alien. of death. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, when she showed up, yeah, it, that's when I was like, "Am I taking crazy pills? Like, what's going on right now?" Uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, if anyone ha- has never seen the video for "Stay," please go watch the video. Stop, stop the podcast. Go watch the video. Um, so, stay. It, there's two singers in the band so uh chiffon Fe- fahey is the is the is the is the angel of death that came down the steps and marcella detroit is the woman who was sort of um you know with the guy on the on the sick bed um now this song is was obviously their biggest hit it went number one all over the world it, it was number one for eight weeks in the uk that kind of thing but it kind of led to the downfall of the band so when when Shakespeare's sister originated, it was just Siobhan Fahey who was the singer. It was just a one; she was the only uh, singer of the band, and she used to be in a band called Banana Rama, which was another big band from the eighties. Uh, it wasn't until later on that they became a duo when she brought Marcella Detroit in, who her real name is Marcy Levy, by the way. Her her real name is not Marcella Detroit, and because of the success of the song, everyone thought Marcella Detroit was the lead singer and Siobhan was more the backup because of how the dynamic of the video worked um, so that led to a lot of conflict within the band and they broke up soon after after I think they broke up like two or three years after the song was released and is is this like their best song would you say yeah that, it's a really interesting question they had a lot of success in the UK like su- successful albums other successful singles I have not heard any of them the only song I know by this band is this one. That's it. Like this is the only crossover hit that I can think of um, from Shakespeare's Sister. Okay, so a lot, definitely a lot of resentment then <laughs> among uh, yes, Siobhan. Yes. Yeah, like I, I, I get it. It's it sucks because like why are you mad that your band's doing well? But I, I, I get why there would be some insecurity there. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, it had to be, you know, you think you're the, you know, you're the more famous person. You're in a band called Bananarama, which was a very successful band from the eighties. And then you're the lead singer. And all of a sudden that gets flipped on its head. You know, ego is plays a huge part in rock and roll or, or popular music. And it must've been a kick in the pants for, for Siobhan to sort of take a back seat in a lot of ways. Now saying that Marcella Detroit is a much better singer than Siobhan as anyone who's heard the song would, would testify. Uh, Siobhan Fahey is definitely a very specific type of singer where Marcella Detroit has that lead vocalist sort of, sort of voice. Yeah. Uh, I hope that, that that's understandable to you. Yeah, no, it's super understandable. She's got an incredible voice. Like yeah. caught my attention right away uh, where it makes you just sit there and think, okay, I'm listening to an excellent singer right now. Uh, haven't heard the other person sing, but if it's not mm. that level, then I get it. Well, and I think Siobhan sings her part very well. I think it, it needed a lower registry. Uh, and, you know, I think she does a fantastic job. Like she, it's her performance that turns this from a really good song to, to a great song. So I, I, I think, it, I think it's a perfect combination between the two of them. Yeah. I, I agree, but I I just really do like this song a lot. So that's all I that's all I know about. That's all I can speak on. Um, yeah. But I wanted to ask this. I, I noticed in the comments of the YouTube video, people were talking about uh, Ghost a bunch. What's what's up with that? Like the band Ghost? Is that what they were talking about? Uh, the I think it, the movie, right? Ghost. Oh, the... yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was, if this was part of the soundtrack. I, it might have been part of the soundtrack. Um, I haven't seen Ghost, the movie, in forever, um, so I can't really comment on that. Yeah, I, um, that, I, I, a lot of people were talking about, like, Shakespeare, Sisters, and, and Ghost, or Thank You. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Well, have you seen the movie Ghost? I haven't. Okay, I just I just googled it. Yeah. Um, it yeah, so yeah. it is the band. It's not the movie. Uh, Ghost okay, the band. Ghost. Yeah. So okay, so Ghost yeah. is a Swedish Nordic band that are really they dress up like a demented pope and they really show off their like um, weird church ideology and and they make fun of it, a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, but they're strange. Like they're almost like a death metal pop band. <laughs> Uh, so okay. <laughs> yeah, ghosts are a very interesting band. Yeah. yeah, they they did a cover of this song for the latest Insidious okay. movie. There you go. That makes sense. That that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, ghost is um, some people love Ghost. Like my partner Angie loves Ghost. The saw them when they played here in Brisbane last, and yeah, they they uh, they dress up in very weird religious garb on stage, but like zombie sort of religious garb, like, like it's okay. a dead Pope sort of, sort of, sort of thing. Yeah. They're very interesting, Ben. Well, maybe because we already have a, who played it better this month. Maybe next month we do. Yeah. Uh, next month Ghost we'll and, do ghost <laughs> stay by Shakespeare's sister. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. Uh, um, I just want to talk a little bit more about the video and I, I, yes. I think why it's so good. Um, so as I said, Mar- Marcella Detroit is is the one uh, sort of nursing the man who's in a comatose sort of state, and and if you look at the window, it's really you know you see sort of the Milky Way, and and you see some planetoids, and you so you're right away you can it's set not on Earth, so it's in this weird realm, and the way she's dressed, she's wearing all black, but with like a hint of white that sort of gives off like nun vibes. Um, and you know she's wearing a little bit of white makeup, so she almost looks like uh, like a mime or a ghost. So she's giving off that kind of vibe, and and then all of a sudden the angel of death comes in out of a flash, which I thought was a really interesting choice, where she sort of appears from a flash. And I like the way Siobhan, as the angel of death, moves. It's like she's almost getting used to having feet again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it's like it's like she's oh she this is what feet feel like again, and she sort of this weird being. And then as she walks down the steps, um, she w- walks down the steps in a very weird sort of menacing manner. And oh, I think the video is absolutely perfect. I think they nailed the tropes very well. I think they made it cinematic. Um, it's brilliant. I think the video. Yeah, they did. 
a fantastic job with the video. Like, yeah, it it fits the song perfectly, and yeah, the the way the scenes in the video change with the music as well, it's perfect. Mm. It's a I, I understand totally why you wanted me to watch the video, especially on my first listen to the song because it makes yeah. it all that more cinematic and powerful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, uh, it's funny preparing for this video or preparing for the podcast. I, I saw a lot of reaction videos to, to this, you know, people that had never heard the song before and they react to the videos. And it, again, when Siobhan sort of appears as the angel of death, you know, people, you can just, their mouths just drop and they're like, what's going on sort of thing. Yeah. So it's really interesting if, <laughs> if you ever want to watch reaction videos to the song, it's pretty neat. Yeah. It's, it's a good video. So I can only imagine yeah. the reactions are <laughs> pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's like, it's one of my favorite songs for the 90s. But again, um, I know nothing else from Shakespeare's sister. They're not a one-hit wonder by any stretch of the imagination because they've had a really long career in England, especially. And they reunited a few years ago and did a tour. But they're very much an English or European act. Um, they probably would do kind of well here in Australia. But in North America, I don't think they would do well. Interesting. Well, at least there's this song. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's just one of those songs that, that I've always loved over the years. And yeah. Um, and again, one of the, one of the songs I've been dying to play you on this podcast, I just wanted to find the right time for you to get to listen to the song. So yeah, I think this was the perfect time. I also really, enjoyed the like message and and stuff in the song like what what they're actually singing about like really heavy powerful themes and and subject matter too and i thought they Mm. did it really really well yeah i i agree i think it's just stands out um it this won the brit pop award i think for best video of the year it came out um yeah, so it's it's just you know it's just one of those little pieces of art that sort of just sticks with you. Yeah, no, I I get it, I get it. This if I saw this when I was the age you saw it in the nineties, like yeah, I I would feel the same way probably. Mm. Yeah, 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 and uh, you know, like I said, if if you haven't seen the video for Stay, please go on YouTube, look it up, um, and maybe. Yeah, go see the ghost version. I didn't even know there was a ghost version. Uh, you know, see which one, see what it's, see what that's like. Uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, please, uh, you know, reach out on social media and tell us what you thought of uh, of the video for the song. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, ghost. I'm excited to listen to that version. <laughs> yeah. Um, what song do you have for me for next week? So for next week. You're going to listen to the song Free in the Knowledge by The Smile. Uh, Are you familiar with The Smile? Okay. It sounds familiar, but um, I can't place them at the the top of my head. It's it's Radiohead 2.0. It's uh, Tom York and Johnny Greenwood's side project. Oh, okay. I have heard of The Smile. Yep. I don't know this. I don't know this song, which is good. Okay, cool. Yep. So, yeah, looking forward to discussing that one. Yeah, me too. And for you, I'm sticking with amazing videos from the 90s. So you're going to um, watch first the video for the Beastie Boys Sabotage, which I think once you've heard it or have seen it, you're going to go, okay, I don't know the song because it's in a lot of music video. Or sorry, a lot of movies. <laughs> it's on a lot of soundtracks. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing you, you'll know this song. I think it was on Suicide Squad or I think it was on a Star Trek episode, like one of the Star Trek movies they they played this song so you'll know it i think okay cool but uh regardless i haven't seen the video so i'm excited for this yeah but uh, yeah i think you'll like i think you'll dig the video cool cool all right um yeah let's let's do where uh, who played it better so you uh you brought the song to me this week so tell us about the, the songs you picked yeah so a while ago now i guess on the podcast uh you had me listen to the song love will tear us apart uh which fantastic uh goes down as one of my favorite songs that you've got me to listen to to this day Uh, very very high up on that list too uh that song really struck a chord with me and like has just stayed with me and 
even gotten me through some some times in life like when you just needed a specific song that one's been yes been there for me and uh yeah me too as i mentioned last week i just recently watched the show normal people and the cover of level terrace apart is in normal people one of the episodes very emotional dramatic moment and when i first heard uh the the cover start i said no way this is a cover of level terrace apart because <laughs> i was already emotional right. about what was happening in the show and then this song starts playing yeah so all of that to say uh i'm, I'm a really big fan of this cover by narina pa- pallet I, I think that's how you say her name narina pallet um yeah okay. so darren why don't you just hit play on level terrace apart So I, uh, I'll just come right out and say, like, I do still prefer the original, obviously, like it's a classic, mm-hmm. but I yep. like the cover. I think it's, I think it's a nice take. I, I think the cover is, is perfect because you want a cover song not to be like the original. You want the artist to take, to have their own take on the song. You want it to be different and a, it's different. It's, it's performed very well, very well. The production is very good and it's a, it's a marvelous cover. However, I think that the Joy Division is such an iconic song. And like you said, it's it's played such a role in society, especially to, like I said, you know, when you're going through a bit of a tough time or whatever, you listen to the to that song. Joy Division just has that that knack that it's too iconic not to pick Joy Division, if that makes sense. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like the Joy Division song is the Joy Division song. There's no way around it. It's 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 unbeatable for me. But yeah, I I, I agree with you. I think Narina Pallet really it's a really it's a really nice take. Oh, it's a great cover. Yeah, it's a great cover. Yeah, and I I think the like the style in which she did it, like very minimal, stripped back strings and whatnot, like really allowed the lyrics to shine. Like the songwriting really comes through in her cover. Mm. You can really focus more on on the story that's being painted by the lyrics. So I do like right. that aspect of it. Yeah. You know, and, and it gave me different feelings to to the original where this one is much more heartfelt. And, and I found myself paying attention to the lyrics a little bit more, where in the Joy Division song, you sort of just get the feeling of dread <laughs> while listening to the song. Yeah whatever and this is more the feeling of of heartache that's the best way yes. i can describe it yeah it's way more yeah depressing i think this version way more <laughs> yeah 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 the other one is more of a feeling of um you know what england must have felt like in the 19 in the early 1980s i guess yeah <laughs> yeah like Mar- you know margaret thatcher's dreadful. england where the there's not a lot of yeah, you know, it's raining all the time. There's not a lot of employment. You know, I'm, you're in Manchester before Alex Ferguson got there. You know, it must have been depressing. <laughs> yeah, just a bit dismal, whereas the Narina palette is just kind of heart-wrenching. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, it's heart-wrenching. That's exactly right. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a great song. I'm glad you. I'm glad we were able to, to, to sort of, uh, you know, not pit the songs against each other, but sort of compare them to each other. Yeah, I I think of a song of this caliber, uh, like neither of us were ever going to pick the Narina palette, but it's fun to just compare uh, different takes, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, I would love to see what uh, our listeners think. So I'm going to put both these songs in our Instagram stories. I'll put the original um, Joy Division song and then we'll put uh, Narina palette song up there and please uh, vote and tell us who you think played it better. Yes. All right, Nick, uh, what are your plans the rest of the week? Well, I am uh, seeing Dune Part 1 tomorrow, that uh, the IMAX re-release, right, yep. uh, one show only. So I'm really excited for that. Love Dune. Big, big, big Dune fan. Uh, can't wait for that tomorrow. And then mm. 
yeah, that's that's sort of it. I work Friday and then see where the weekend takes me. Um, here on Friday, it's Australia Day, which over the years since I've moved here has really taken on a different sort of feeling. When I first moved here 17 years ago, Australia Day was much more of a celebration, kind of like, you know, Independence Day or Canada Day in, in North America. But over the last few years, uh, a lot of people don't celebrate Australia Day anymore because they see it as a colonizing day where, you know, you know, Captain uh, Cook, I think his name was, came in and sort of killed a lot of Aboriginal people. Um, so a lot of people don't actually celebrate Australia Day anymore. And one of the major supermarkets here in Australia, Woolworths, which is an American company, by the way, they're not going to have any Australia Day decorations for sale. Um, there's a whole push in Parliament to change Australia Day to another name called Invasion Day and maybe not have it as a celebration, more of a, a remembrance sort of thing. Um, yeah, so uh, it is a national holiday, but it's really weird how it's how the consciousness of Australia has really struggled with the day. Um, yeah, it's an odd. Yeah, it's it's always uh, it's always interesting going through those transition periods where, as you said, like the consciousness of the society uh, becomes a bit more. Mm aware of of the actions that that entities may have taken in the past and and sort of grapple with their role in that it's yeah it's it's really interesting experience it's experiencing that in real time yeah they want to move the they want to keep the day because the 26th of january is when cook landed in australian shores so that's why it's remembered as australia day but they they sort of want to keep that as a remembrance but move australia day to an to another date where it doesn't have that connotation to it and i'm okay with that um like i said i'm i'm not born here i'm not a australian dissenter i'm a permanent resident in this country so i'm going to sort of let the citizens the citizens decide what they want to do with this day uh but i can see the argument on both sides where you want to sort of keep tradition and you want to you know also pay respects to a lot of people that were murdered and uh, an entire civilization lot, that was almost yeah. wiped off the face of the earth yeah, yeah um, so murder. yeah it's going to be interesting to see a lot of bloody the the, the english were really good at weaponizing slavery and murder <laughs> Yes. They did a pretty good job. Excelled. Yeah. <laughs> they they created an, an entire empire based on uh, you know <laughs> on uh, the uh, the the slave trade really. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where Australia Day goes the next few years. Yeah, you're just worried about when your day off is. All right. Right. Yeah. See, I think again, I think a lot of people like the day off and don't sort of care about the historical significance and so um yeah whatever so happy australia day people i guess happy <laughs> you know australia have day, fun yeah. on, on i hope you ha- hope you i hope you had fun on australia day because this episode will come out afterwards but yeah um let's see what australia day is like next year our independent artist this week is pre love things from brisbane they are pseudo intellectual misfits who play a unique brand of alt art rock that can be described as a homogeneous unit that easily weaves the calm and subdued with the chaotic and manic to create a sound that is distinctly their own. They have a new album coming out in 2024, and it's called How Life Strange Is, which is a pretty cool title, if you ask me. Uh, let me tell you a little story about this uh, band. We're going to listen to a song called Entertaining the Thought of Leaving You. I was driving with uh, my partner, Angie, who's got a very hard-to-please musical taste, and as we were driving, I was playing this song, and she's like, who is this? And I said, it's all it's our independent act, and she actually loved the song, and uh, that's a rare thing when it comes to some of the music that I play her. So yes, so you have a definite fan in my partner, Angie and myself. Uh, It's like a mix between Radiohead and, and Portishead. That's the way we describe it. So thank you guys for letting us uh, play your song. Uh, We really loved it. And here it is entertaining the thought of leaving you.
been listening to Just Hit Play. To contact your hosts, Peter and Nick, or to be featured on an episode as musical talent, email justhitplay7300 at gmail.com. Keep up to date with news and announcements by following on Instagram and Facebook, linked in the show notes. Subscribe on your favourite podcatcher to tune in next week for more Sonic Delights. And if you can't wait till then, check out the Just Hit playlist on Spotify, linked in the show notes. A special thanks to Braden Munch for the theme song, and thank you for listening. <laughs>